Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our alumni panel. Thank you guys all for coming tonight. We're going to wait just a, you know, a couple more minutes, let a few more families join on. I know we have more registered than just two families, so we'll give it a few and then we'll get the ball rolling. But thank you guys for joining us this evening. Awesome, we'll just wait a few more moments. It looks like we have a you know, couple more people, a few stragglers rolling in. Hi, Chris, just waiting a couple more moments for some families to join and then we're gonna get the ball rolling. All right, well, we are recording. So some of those families that are tuning in late, they will definitely be able to view the recording. Um, and catch what they've missed. But in consideration to some of our alumni time, we will probably get started this evening. But I'm Alicia Berry. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Proctor Academy. Hopefully by this point in time, most of you joining uh, have known me. I have been on quite a few panels at this point. Um, but I'm really going to pass the mic tonight over to these four amazing alumni that we have joining us that, you know, have been part of this whole spectrum now. A lot of our panels, you're tuning in with current students, which is amazing, and they are fantastic resources, but they're still in the middle of their journeys in a sense. So to be able to um, connect with some of these alumni as they can really reflect over the years and then kind of moving to their present of how Proctor is you know, worked into their life in various manners is going to be a fantastic resource for all of you. So I am actually going to pass the mic around the, the mic um, for our students here. So Sam, if you wanna start off and introduce yourself and give a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, I'm Sam. Uh, I graduated from Proctor in 2019 um, and now I go to Denison University. Uh, which is in Ohio. Um, when I was at Proctor, I was involved in theater there. I was in the mountain biking team. I did a few off-campus programs. I went to Spain and I went on a mountain classroom with Lucas, um, who will introduce himself in a second. Um, when I was going to Proctor, I, I went, a big reason was my brother was there before me. I had no interest in going to boarding school and then I saw what it did for him and I, I couldn't pass it up. So then I, uh, I got my way in there. Um, and I mean, I've, I'm so happy I did. One of the best decisions I've made, but I'll let the next person go. Mackenzie, you wanna go? Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Mackenzie. Uh, I currently go to Sarah Lawrence College in New York. Um, I graduated in 2020 from Proctor, and while I was there, I was on the tennis team. Um, I was part of PEA towards the end of my years there, um, which is the Proctor Environmental Action Group, sorry. Uh, and I also did Ocean Classroom and the Guatemala service trip. Awesome, and Lucas, we already heard a little bit that you went on Mountain Classroom, but. Yeah, so I was, on Mountain Classroom with Sam, my junior year. I graduated in 2019. I'm Lucas Bush, um, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I was really into um, playing soccer and playing tennis in my time at Proctor and um, student government as well. Um, I served as the student leader for my senior year. And um, yeah, I was there all four years. I'm from a family, three of my siblings um, are involved at Proctor. Two of them are there now. One of them has graduated um, and they've all, they've all just loved it. So I'll pass it to Haley. 
Hi guys, my name is Haley. I um, also was in the class of 2019 with Lucas and Sam, and I currently am a sophomore at Clemson University. Um, at Proctor, though, I went on the Spain abroad program, and I also was very involved with soccer, just like Lucas, um, as well as lacrosse and um, the business club. Awesome. Thank you guys all for you know sharing a little bit about yourselves. And so for all the families joining us, this is an excellent time. Please submit any questions you have for students. Um, this is a great time of, you know, if you have any questions about the college counseling process or, you know, questions about how Proctor has kind of helped them gear them towards what they've done post graduation or just anything along those lines. Um, fantastic opportunity to ask any of those questions. Um, but I do have first and foremost a question here that um, this is just a really broad, big question. Um, and Sam, you kind of mentioned it, but it's kind of that, uh, why did you choose Proctor? And obviously some of you guys have to look back quite a ways for that now, but thinking back to your, um, you know, your middle school selves or maybe even early high school selves um, of kind of how you made that transition. But if each of you guys would like to share a little bit more about that. Um, Haley, since you were the last one to go and your bubble still has a highlight for me for some reason, if you wanna share. Yeah, I, um, I actually was a repeat junior at Proctor um, and a day student. I did high school for three years in Needham, Massachusetts. Um, and I have quite a family tradition at Proctor. And so my parents kind of started pushing it. And at first I was very reluctant going into my senior year to transfer schools. Um, but after revisit day, after doing my tour, I basically said to my parents, hey, if you're not moving to New Hampshire, I'm going because I just fell in love with Proctor, um, especially the off-campus opportunities and just like the all-encompassing life that Proctor offers was really attractive to me, especially in the small setting because I went to such a giant high school. I just felt like um, one fish in a giant ocean. So coming to Proctor, um, I don't know where I would be right now without it because it really shaped who I am now. Awesome. And Mackenzie, how did you end up at Proctor? Yeah, so um, I have two brothers that went to Proctor before me. Um, so I already had that sort of underlying connection. Um, but when I went to go visit, uh, I really fell in love with like the campus. And um, like Haley was saying, the off-campus opportunities sound really cool. And uh, also the learning skills program at Proctor. Um, I really wanted to do because I wanted to work on like my uh, different skills in different areas um, and ultimately it really helped but um, that's sort of why I chose. Awesome and Lucas? Um, so as I mentioned briefly before I've had an older sister who went here before me um, and I'd make trips up um, every few weekends to go to games and whatnot and she loved it she did ocean classroom um nicola her name was nicola <laughs> um and yeah she had great friends she would always come home with great stories and i was like okay like i want to go there and my parents were like really you can you can just stay home like you can go to like a day school if you want and i was like nope and and i applied i looked at a few schools but proctor was like just like easy that was my top choice like that's what I was telling all my eighth grade friends from like the beginning of eighth grade that Proctor was the move. Yeah. Awesome, Lucas, you've just been working admissions this whole time since eighth grade. Um, I just also realized that all four of you guys are all Proctor siblings, had your siblings come through here and whatnot, kept it in the family, kept it rolling. I was about to say, I promise not everybody has an older sibling that went to Proctor. It just uh, happens to be this group. Well, I feel like I have told all the families too that I had a Proctor sibling that's come through here. So it's really just a trend. Um, your younger siblings want to come here as well. So um, I know a couple of families that are in here watching this evening have siblings that are looking the same direction. So um, just happy to know that there's lots of siblings in our community. Um, this next question has to do a little bit um, with your transition to college. And so 
Uh, it says, what was the transition like um, from Proctor to college? And did you feel prepared that Proctor prepared you well for college? I know that's a, a big question, obviously, but if you guys would like to speak a little bit about that. Mackenzie, you're our most recent grad, so I might pass the mic to you first. Sure. Um, so obviously I came to school in the middle of a pandemic, uh, which was kind of weird, but um, I found that school-wise, um, I felt more prepared for college than I think I realized. Um, when you're at Proctor, you learn a lot of like skill sets and you really grow from like freshman year, any, any point when you start at Proctor um, to graduation and it sort of happens and you don't really know it. And then you get to college and you're like, oh, wow, I'm actually really good at a lot of things that I didn't think I was good at. Um, and I think that was the biggest surprise for me is I got to college and I had all of this work and I was like, oh, I actually know how to complete this in sort of like a timely manner. And um, I have all these skills that were helpful to a lot of the things I was um, starting with at college. Um, so I thought that was the biggest thing for coming to college. I just thought I was surprisingly like prepared for it um, because I know from high school to college, it can be really confusing and um, complicated. So I thought um, Proctor in a school sense was, was super helpful. Awesome. And I might actually double back to you real quick, Mackenzie too. When you're talking about a lot of those skills, do you feel like learn, you mentioned that you were in the learning skills program. Do you feel like that kind of set you in a good place as well? being able to go in and tackle a lot of these assignments at college? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I like when I started at Proctor, I think I had a tough time like looking at an assignment and then I think I got too like overwhelmed and I would just like, ah, and freak out. But through like learning skills, I sort of figured out how to manage it and look at like a bunch of work and be like, okay, I can actually do this and then just do it. <laughs> um, so that was very helpful, um, especially for college when you do have a lot more work, um, you do have more time to do it in, so it's a little bit easier, but um, I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, but also just, I think, skills in, sort in, in terms of organization as well. Um, when I came to Proctor, I wasn't very organized with my work. Um, but in college, I feel like you kind of have to be <laughs> or else it gets uh, to be kind of complicated. So I think uh, that was also a really big thing for me. Awesome. Thanks, Mackenzie. Sam, how did Proctor prep you for that next step? Um, I remember coming into college on the first day and like, I'm like, I mean, I live in Massachusetts. I go to school in Ohio. So I had just driven out like 16 hours or something to get here. Um, and I got to my dorm room. I threw my stuff down and I went and I started knocking on the doors of the people who lived around me and like saying hi to people. And I remember being, I was surprised because so many people whose doors I knocked on were caught off guard by someone who just like, was like ready to be living at school and like meeting people. And I, I go to school from my from our graduating class there are four of us who came to Denison and we all were talking later and we all had the same experience where we were like settled in our rooms in like five minutes and then out and just like making friends um and I think that's something that I really owe to Proctor and beyond just that like that experience of living away from home and living in a dorm room just like the community that's on Proctor's campus and knowing how positive that is and then going somewhere else and knowing what to look for, I think was really huge for me and figuring out what I wanted to do and how I wanted to live at college. Um, and I for sure owe that to Proctor. Nice, and Haley, how do you feel, you know, with your transition and everything coming, you know, out of the Proctor community? Yeah, I've had a really interesting transition because I actually started at a different college my freshman year. I was at Bentley University. And um, I mean, Proctor is really the reason because I just fell in love with Proctor when I was there and kind of the feelings that I felt at Proctor versus my first high school. I just knew I had to get college right. And it wasn't right my freshman year for me. I didn't love it. And I just wanted so badly to love a school like I loved Proctor. Um, so I actually um, 
applied as and transferred this year. And um, I ended up because my mom works at Proctor, she had to, you know, quarantine. So I had to drive down to Clemson University where I didn't know anyone by myself and set up my apartment that I'd found. And honestly, I attribute um, having the confidence to do that to my experiences at Proctor. I was um, a part of the Spain program and lived with a host family and um, which can be so uncomfortable at first, but ends up being like the best experience. And I really attribute having the confidence to make that transition um, and the whole transition of college and everything that it involves um, to Proctor's preparation for me. Awesome. And Lucas, um, any any words as to the how Proctor helped you transition? Words are not working for me at the moment. <laughs> yeah, so I'd say um, yeah, roommates, I was, I was, I go to Colorado college. I was forced into a, a forced triple. So it was a tight squeeze and everyone before was like, Oh, forced triple. Like, no, thanks. No, that sounds horrible. But I was like, no, like, that's like two roommates. Like if this one doesn't really work out, then maybe there's that one. Luckily they're both amazing people. I'm living with one now. Um, for, I'm taking the semester off right now, the COVID, um, but yeah, they're the nicest people. Um, and we're there we are, three of us in a two person room, cramped together, like sharing all our stuff. It's not like we have one decoration. Um, I just think I had a few roommates in Proctor and that just made me so, mu so much more open-minded to having a new roommate or an unusual rooming situation. Um, and yeah, I'm also when we got sent home for COVID last year, um, everyone was like, oh my God, it's going to be just like high school. We're going to be living at home with our parents and doing homework. And I was like, that, that was nothing like high school. High school is kind of like this. And so it totally set me up um, like for college. And I, I felt very comfortable my first year. Nice. Um, Sam's story kind of reminded me a little bit. I remember my first floor meeting of college and all the girls sitting down talking about how much they hated their high school and they were never going back to visit. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I did not, like, I was like, first time it really hit me that I didn't have a normal high school experience. And I was like, is it all downhill from here? Like, I remember like actually having that thought. I promise you guys, it's not all downhill. Although I am back working at Proctor. So maybe I peaked, so we're not sure. But um, Anyhow, this next question is talking a little bit about what you guys have kind of mentioned in some aspects of, you know, how did you see yourself change over your time at Proctor? Um, you know, and through, you guys have talked about, Haley, you mentioned with your off-campus programs and things like that too. So maybe also weaving in, if you went off an off-campus program, um, how that also kind of worked into your change in your time at Proctor. Um, and so Haley, I might actually loop it back to you to start this one off. Yeah, I so I came in um, a repeat junior, so I was a little old. I wasn't a freshman when I made the transition, um, but you know I was a decent student. But I just like wasn't. I I did sports in high school, but otherwise I wasn't super involved. Um, but at Proctor, I was like a head tour guide and I was head of the business club with my best friend. And um, but probably the biggest thing for me was Spain. Um, I discovered a love of, of Spanish and the culture. And I went to four soccer games and it was just incredible. Um, and now I'm actually interning with a Spanish hotel uh, virtually. And I've decided to major in um, Spanish and international business. Um, so without that experience in Spain, I have no idea what I'd be studying or um, what my passion would be. So um, that probably was one of the biggest takeaways for me was just finding my passion. Awesome. And switching over to Sam. Sorry, I'm pointing like you guys can see how my computer camera set up. But Sam, what would you say? Um, um, I feel like I could talk about this for a long time, but I'll try to just pick like a few key things. Um, I probably also owe a lot of my like big personal developments to off campus programs. Um, like I said before, a big reason that I came is came to Proctor's because I saw what it did for my brother and specifically what Ocean Classroom did for my brother. Um, and so I came in initially really wanting to do that and have that experience that he had. And I ended up not doing it. I did two other ones, which I love and I don't regret at all. I'm so glad I picked the ones I picked. Um, but 
this year I um, like I was looking at school and it wasn't <laughs> looking like it was going to go super well with you know everything that's happening <laughs> um, and I found a program called Seamaster that was like Ocean Classroom and ended up last minute I was going back to school in August and in August I decided that instead of going back to school I was going to go sail across the Indian Ocean and it's like the spirit of that type of adventure that was seated for me at Proctor and I know for sure I can trace it back to Proctor because there were two other Proctor students who also signed up for the program and none of us knew the other ones were doing it um and so if that like doesn't convince you that that is like really truly fostered at Proctor I don't know what would because that was the craziest thing getting there and seeing someone who was in my advisory and one of my friends who I would see walking around campus on a boat in the Maldives um really uh yeah we I mean we all talked about it the whole time we were there how much Proctor did for us and we like I mean yeah I'm just I'm, I'll keep gushing like this forever if I don't stop myself right now so I'll pass it on yeah if that's not the definition of like small world but then also the boarding school world gets even smaller so it's pretty crazy how those will always line up and it a crazier thing that we found out later is one of the staff members who was on our on our boat previously worked on the roseway which is the fall ocean classroom boat at proctor um and it was just such like a proctor world colliding <laughs> moment it was it was great um, and Lucas, what would you say kind of about your time at Proctor? Um, I mean, I know this has been hit a lot, but off-campus programs. I did three in my four years. I did Costa Rica, my sophomore, Mountain, my junior, and Euro, European art classroom, my senior year. Um, they're all amazing, but I I just hats off to Mountain Classroom with Sam Wyckoff. Um, like there was, I don't know about you, Sam, but there's this, you get this list of kids you kind of know, there's 10 of us in total. And you're just like, all right, like I, I'm for, good friends with that person, never spoken to this person, never even seen this person and everyone in between. And we, I've never been more comfortable with the group of people by the end of that experience. We were like doing everything together. And just like, of course there's no electronics or anything. We'd just be sitting around a campfire for hours and um, even, even when we got back to Proctor and there would be some mountain reunion, um, there's just no stopping us from chatting it up because, I mean, there's um, all you Proctor people will know all those jokes about the off-campus kids, especially Ocean. It's like, all right, you put two or more Ocean classroom kids in a room and it's just like nonstop inside jokes that you'll never get in on. But um, my brother just got off, um, oh, mountain I convinced him to do it and like it did so much for him and so I'd say um, mountain classroom is definitely and and from then on I'm just like wow like we're all just like so tight I can get along with anyone in this small school um, so I'd, I gotta say mountain was the biggest for me that's funny that you brought that up Lucas because today at lunch I was sitting at a table and then there was three tables that were because there were only limit four per table right now with COVID and it was all the mountain kids sitting together and I got up and I was like oh did you guys do you guys know each other you guys all go on mountains together and your brother was like yes Alicia we get it so <laughs> um Mackenzie do you want to tell us a little bit about your time yeah sure um so I would say I was basically a completely different person when I started Proctor. Um, that may sound a little dramatic, but I, I think it's true. Um, I was sort of really quiet and reserved and to a certain extent I still am, but I think that Proctor was really influential in finding out what I'm really passionate about and what I, what my values are. Um, things like that. Uh, I think through, especially Ocean Classroom, I remember after I got off of Ocean, I think I came back onto campus and I was like, I wanna do all this stuff on campus now. Like you just, you're exposed to so many things in the world when you do these programs that it makes you wanna be more adventurous and outgoing. And um, you just have this new sense of like 
oh my gosh, I want to do everything, um, which I think is probably one of the best things that you can have um, because it opens you up to so many new experiences and you meet so many great people. Um, so I think that Proctor really helped me in that aspect of uh, opening up my worldview, I guess, um, but also my uh, ability to just walk up to someone and be like, hi, I'm Mackenzie, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think that's a very valuable thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, sorry to interrupt. Did that just reminded me of something, Mackenzie, um, like appreciating the little things. Like Sam, I don't know if you remember this, Mountain Classroom. We were just discussing like how magical it was that we could always have a PB and J in the dining hall, like because we wouldn't really get that on Mountain. And then I'm like, oh, we should have cheddar cheese at the dining hall. And that's what got me to run for student leader. Cause I'm like, all right, there's no cheddar cheese in the dining hall. Like that needs to change. And then everyone on the mountain was like, yeah, run for student leader. And very supportive. And thanks to Mountain, I um, ran for student leader and was very happy. And thanks to Lucas, we have cheddar cheese in the dining hall now for everyone tuned in tonight. I can tell you that firsthand. It's fantastic. Wow. Thanks, Lucas. <laughs> Um, this, you guys have kind of all, um, you've been talking a lot about your connections that you made with people on specific trips, but then also, you know, roommates, things like that too, which actually leads to this next question that was submitted in the chat, um, talking about, again, have you connected with your, your Proctor friends now that you've moved on to your next journey? And I guess you can even loop that to the bigger picture of just Proctor community in general, advisors, old teachers, dorm parents, um, have you guys felt like you've been fairly connected with some of your peers? Obviously, you know, life gets busy and things, but, you know, Mackenzie, you're one year out in a very, um, you know, tumultuous year with COVID. How has that been one year out kind of chatting with your old peers? Yeah, um, I think this could be just because I'm so recently, uh, you know, graduated from Proctor, but I've stayed like in very close touch with my uh, friends from Proctor, especially um, probably because we all value um, a lot of connection right now um, because we're also isolated, but uh, I've stayed very, very close with my friends. And even with a lot of teachers at Proctor, um, my advisor, I talk to her uh, really frequently actually. <laughs> um, and I think that is sort of a testament to the relationships you make there um, because they're very deep and personal. And um, even with teachers that you've only had once, you you know see them around, you're like, oh, hey. And then you just have a conversation and it's, um, I don't know. I think that's one of my favorite parts about Proctor is all of the relationships that I made there um, because they, uh, I think, not only helped me grow like as a student um because that's what high school is all about but i think also as a person um and yeah uh, i have stayed very in uh very close touch with a lot of people at proctor awesome and i hope you've told your advisor about your tennis adventures i'm sure she'd be very pumped as the tennis coach um Haley, how, what about you? I know you were only a proctor two years. How do you feel kind of with your connections and staying in touch as you've left the community? I use the left the community just physically, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I um, so as a day student, I, I think it was kind of unique to my class. There were a lot of day students um, like from I live in Andover, just five minutes from Proctor. And I mean, I spent my whole summer with the day, the day student squad, <laughs> um, really group, great group of kids. Um, I also on my adventure down to South Carolina, I stopped and saw one of my friends um, in Virginia and one of my friends um, who goes to Sacred Heart came and visited me. So I've definitely stayed in close touch, but I think also my advisory was a really fun group of kids, um, just kind of kind of like similar to what Lucas was saying about Mountain, just kids you wouldn't necessarily have been in a group with otherwise um, thrown together that we all really grew to appreciate each other. Um, and the other night, Patty Pond, our advisor, was hosting one of those virtual um, meetups and I threw in the group chat like the link and we all hopped on and it was so fun to see everyone. So I definitely stay in close touch. Nice. And what about you, Sam? Um, I mean, I have a little bit of a different situation because I ended up going to school with 
three other people from our graduating class. Um, one of them went on mountain with Lucas and I, my, our friend Anna, um, and we still hang out all the time. Our friends are all sick of us talking about Proctor because we still talk about it all the time. Um, but even beyond that, it's just like all the friends I made at Proctor are people I feel like I could text at any time about anything. Um, and it's like, I, I do, and we all do. Sometimes we'll go like a month without talking to each other and you get a call at some random time and you're on the phone for the next two hours talking with your, with your good friend. And I've done that with so many people from Proctor. And I, I also came in as a junior um, to Proctor and I like, I haven't talked to anyone from my school before. And I like don't feel like I need to because I'm so, I feel like I still am so much a part of the community and have so much fulfillment from that community. Um, and I love it. And I am for sure friends with all of them or if, like most of them. Awesome. And what about you, Lucas? Obviously you have two siblings here, but looking at some of the kids that you came to school with. Yeah, well, my two siblings, definitely a big, um, you know, big, connection um i still stay close with um as i mentioned earlier i've had a few roommates mostly due to just off-campus programs not aligning um but they they'll, they'll still reach out i'll reach out anytime like this summer my uh one of my roommates needed a help driving his truck to oregon um and i was like yeah sure and we had this nice like catching up time um and yeah, I feel very comfortable with the faculty as well. Um, there was one occasion where I needed to do a social experiment in one of my classes, uh, deviance and social control, um, where you needed to interrupt someone's Zoom call, like rudely to see how they react, like in that social environment. And luckily I was, my siblings are doing online school and um, Lindsey Brown, one of the math teachers, like, okay, I, I don't want to have to do this, but if I'm going to do it, I can do it. Lindsay Brown, she'll understand. Um, and she understood. <laughs> and it's just, I still know, I'm like, okay, this teacher, yeah, I can I totally relate. They're always there for me, um, even after I've graduated. Um, so, yeah. Nice. I wish I could have been part of that class to see that happen. Um, this next question too, which I think is a good one. Um, for those of you that have a college major, um, what are you guys studying for? And do you feel like Proctor helped kind of guide you towards that direction of study? Um, Mackenzie, do you want to start this again? You're just that first camera for me. Sure. Sorry. Could you re repeat the question? <laughs> Yeah, um, it was asking, you know, if you've already selected a college major, um, what that is, what you're studying, and do you feel like Proctor kind of helped guide you towards that? Did you take some of those classes while you were here or in that direction anyhow? Yeah, um, so currently my major is women and gender studies um, with sort of an emph emphasis on um, undocumented farm labor and uh, other issues surrounding that. Um, and I think certainly um, my service trip to Guatemala through Proctor was influential in that aspect of just meeting people and talking about their experiences, um, as well as many classes I took at Proctor really led me to that um, major and sort of framework of what I wanted to do outside of college. Um, I took a class my sophomore year um, with a teacher that is no longer at Proctor, Fiona Mills, but um, she was very influential on my sort of wor world view within the classroom. Um, and I think regardless if you go on an off-campus experience, which I, I highly recommend, um, you do find that inspiration of the world in the classroom. And I think that's a big emphasis I wanna make. Um, because I also had many other teachers, um, to name a few, John Bowden, um, I'm trying to think of others, <laughs> um, Fiona was, you know, it just, et cetera. I think it's uh, a lot of things I did at Proctor really led me to the major I'm in and the field I wanna go work in when I'm older. Um, yeah. 
Awesome. What about you, Sam? What are you studying at the moment? Um, so I am a theater and philosophy double major. Um, and I never took a philosophy class at Proctor. There were some. I Honestly, at the time, before I was forced into one at Denison, I was like, why would anybody ever take a philosophy class? Um, but, uh, but now, of course, I'm majoring in it. Um, and then theater, which I for sure owed to Proctor. Before I came to Proctor, I, I was involved in theater. Um, but at Proctor, for me, it was like a whole new experience with it. Um, my the the director Jen there um, was huge and like mentoring me and all that stuff she really let me like run wild in the space and play with the lighting play with the sound play with acting and directing and all that sorts of stuff and it for sure was like like you wouldn't get an experience with so much freedom and so much like choice and someone to back you with so much passion like Jen did for me um, without like anywhere but Proctor. Um, and I really owe my continuing passion for that to her and to Proctor as a whole. Um, so for sure it affected it, at least one of my majors, the other one, not so much. <laughs> nice, I'm just saying philosophy with Mark Tremblay. It's a life class. Uh, Lucas, I know you're taking a gap um, kind of time now, but what was kind of your direction? What were you looking towards? So I was heading um, geology major, German minor. Um, I'm still set to go study in Berlin in the fall, which I'm very excited about. And maybe even just enroll in a German university for the rest of the spring too. Um, and again, sorry, you know, broken record, off-campus programs, super comfortable, <laughs> made me more comfortable. Right out of Proctor, I did an internship um, in Berlin um, out on my own. and. Um, I don't think I would have been comfortable doing that if I wasn't out on my own um, all the time through Proctor in a safe environment. But um, yeah, that that just got me into this groove of um, German and I fell in love with that and um, mountain classroom, being outdoors, camping, the geology program at Colorado College is outstanding. Um, and it just like really pushes you out um, into the wild. So um, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Nice. That's going to be a really exciting year for you. Um, Haley, what are, what are you studying? You're at a brand new school this year in the midst of COVID. Um, what's kind of the direction you're looking towards? Yeah. So I always, um, I knew I wanted to be in business, uh, but there was just no obvious route to me. Um, and even though I, I, I was scrolling through, like looking at the business majors and I already was, um, got that, I got this internship with a hotel in Spain virtually. And I was just loving getting to speak Spanish again. And it just feels so empowering to kind of have a little bit of a grasp of another language. Um, and especially just, I, I just noticed how I found the intricacies of how they do business in other countries to be very interesting. Um, and I noticed that from my time in Spain, like learning about even the schedule in Spain, how different it is and how it impacts business. Um, and so it just became obvious to me as I was scrolling through the majors and I was like, I love Spanish and I love um, this element of international business. Um, and it just felt very doable to me, especially because I already had that experience um, in Spain and kind of had um, in a great understanding of it. Alicia's poking fun at me in the chat because I go to Clemson and she went to University of South Carolina, our rival school, um, and they have a very great business school, which um, I did get into, but I chose to go to Clemson. So we have a fun back and forth about that. Yeah, I was only slightly um, offended that Haley chose Clemson, but it's fine. I did, yeah, <laughs> right in the chat, but um, Lucas, I saw you unmuted yourself. Were you going to add in there? That was an accident. Oh, <laughs> um, this next question here, which actually I probably will start with you, Lucas, though, since you kind of brought it up of having multiple roommates and you guys have all had off-campus experiments and uh, experiences, sorry. Um, and so this question is speaking to kind of do off-campus programs feel as though they're kind of disrupting your um, sense of belonging in the community at Proctor? Lucas, you mentioned having some different roommates when you talk about teams, things like that. Do you feel like it's weird coming back? How is that transition back to campus? 
so um i it, it didn't really disrupt it believe it or not bear with me um i was um i played uh, varsity soccer and varsity tennis fall spring so the only time i would go off campus would be in the winter um and even for sports like my coach would sit me down i remember my freshman year he sat me down and was like will you ever go on are you ever thinking about going on ocean classroom just let us know we'll work around this just because ocean at the time was only in the fall soccer was only in the fall um and so i think teachers um teachers and uh, coaches do a really great job and being aware and getting it planned out um it's not like oh this person's on ocean classroom they're like abandoning the team or anything it's like oh nice they're on ocean they got on ocean like they're having a great time probably um and I'm so happy that I've had the roommates that I've had. Um, it's not like Proctor's small enough where it's like, okay, like I, if I'm not talking to this person, it's not like I'm going to know everything about their life, but I'm still going to be in touch with them. So if um, I had a roommate for two years, we went on mountain together with Sam. Um, and then we weren't roommates after that, just because um, we went off campus at different times and I had different roommates and we we're still in touch. Like we're still like hanging out all the time. We're still, um, playing sports, whether it's on a team or like Haley and I would, for example, just play sock, pick up soccer on the turf. Um, just everyone's close. And like, if, even if someone is away, it's not like, Oh, forget about them. It's like, Oh, okay. And you're, you're, you're still in touch with them on most, um, off campus besides mountain and ocean where kids don't have their phones, but um, you're still always in touch. Um, and you, your, your bubble is just so big that um, you can, you're tight with everyone and you can slide in and out of it and never feel um, left out or like you don't belong or anything like that. Nice. And maybe Haley or Sam, did that feel any different for you guys only being in the community, you know, two years, you didn't really have those base years of getting connected. Um, do you feel like that changed the experiment, uh, experience at all? Or do you feel like it was kind of, you know, similar to what Lucas just described? I think it was, um, I had a very similar experience. I think that's really the beauty of Proctor is there's no like clicks. It's very fluid in terms of friendships and friend groups. Um, and it's honestly really magical when kids come back. I know like, um, I think for Spring Mountain, it is that they ride, they ride in on the bus and we ring the bell and everyone's so excited to greet everyone. Um, it's really beautiful and there are certain days to mail letters and that you get mail back and it's so fun to hear what's going on off on campus. I mean, for me, I was in Spain, so I was able to be in a little bit of communication with people on campus. Um, but I think it just really creates a really special atmosphere that is so unique. You don't really get that anywhere else. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, this, I had a little bit of an atypical process going off campus. Um, like I said, I came in as a junior and I was there for my junior fall. And then my first winter, I went off campus, which you're technically not really supposed to do, but I worked it out with Patty Pond and like I talked to people and I got it all sorted out. Um, and that this for sure was one of my worries, especially having only been there for one term at Proctor and then leaving. Um, and I was like, I should not have worried for a second. It, what I didn't really understand when I was nervous about it is how structured around these programs Proctor is. It's such a big part of the experience for so many students and um, the students understand that and the faculty understand that. And when you go off campus, people are only happy for you. Obviously they're gonna miss you because they love you and they love seeing you, but um, at it's like you, people leave and come back without missing a beat. Um, and that's because Proctor's been doing these programs for so long, they like better than, like truly better than anybody else. They've nailed down the system. Um, and the students are excited for you. The faculty is excited for you. The setup of the school is made so that you can come off and on like this. It is nothing to worry about. The adjustment is, like smooth and minimal. 
Nice. And Lucas, not to pick on your sibling skin. I actually had last week, um, our kids were in dorm pods in the dining hall, just as we were getting back and waiting for our PCRs transitioning to campus. And I see your sister on the outside of the dining hall, face pressed against the glass, like super excited to see her best friend who was in a different dorm pod because they had both been off campus for the term and they were like, like trying to hug each other through the glass. It was quite comical. <laughs> so it was really cute to see though. Um, Not good friendly. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, down to the last two questions of the evening. Um, so pretty exciting. I, you know, everyone's feeling a little bit of Zoom fatigue, I'm sure, at this point, um, just in the year in general. Um, but this one, which is probably, again, looking back, and I'm sure there's a lot to choose from, but what is your favorite Proctor memory? Again, that's a really, really big question to ask. Mackenzie, you're the most recent, so I'm putting you on the spot first and foremost. I know you're going to hate me for that. Um, okay. Or if that helps, you could say favorite off-campus memory and favorite on-campus memory. Yeah, that narrows it down. Um, so I think ooh, my favorite off-campus memory, um, so I went on Ocean Classroom. Um, and this is, I think, a very typical thing that people say when they're on Ocean Classroom, but um, I think my favorite memory was, uh, mm, so there was one day that the we were out uh, like in the middle of the sea somewhere, I, I kind of forget, and um, obviously there's no land in sight and it was just like terrible weather and it was like raining really hard and it was cold and we were all like freezing and it was the middle of the night and um the waves were like huge and we were all just miserable <laughs> um but uh i was just sitting in the back waiting for someone to tell me what to do and someone was like okay going forward look out so i walked to the bow of the ship where you just sort of stand and look out for other ships passing by you know like obstacles i guess anything and uh, I just remember like standing out there at the front of the ship and it was very like coming of age moment sort of in the movies. Like <laughs> I was just at the bow of the ship and it was like huge and I was obviously on the front. So I was like going way up and way down. It was just sort of like a crazy moment. Um, but in that I was like, I'm like never probably gonna have this again. So I should probably just enjoy it even though I'm miserable. <laughs> Um, and so I was just standing there kind of embracing the like gush of water just hitting me over and over again at like 12 in the morning. And um, I'd say that was my favorite off campus memory, just sort of being in a really rough and, you know, bad situation and just being like, hey, just enjoy it. <laughs> Um, and so I think that's my favorite off-campus memory. Um, I think one of my favorite on-campus memories was probably the first time I won a tennis match. Um, we were actually not even on campus, but uh, we were away. And I think it was my freshman year. Um, and I was playing with a girl who also hadn't played, or I played tennis before, but we hadn't played for Proctor. And um, we were like doubles and the both teams were like tied and our like last match was the match that was going to decide it and last minute like the last point we won and everyone was just like cheering and it was sort of crazy and I think that was the first time I really felt like a community at Proctor because I was like oh my gosh like we're all just sort of like really excited and it was just very exciting so Nice. Um, Haley, what's your, your favorite memory? Or if you have to break it into two, you can do that as well. I think I have to break it into two as well. Um, off campus, I had a really great host family and there's um, a great game called El Clasico, which is when Real Madrid plays Barcelona. And um, it's not on, it wasn't on my host family's TV. They had to go to a bar to watch it and um, my host dad only speaks Spanish and I didn't have a data plan while I was in Spain and he told me to meet him at this bar um, to watch the game with his friends and going to a bar in Spain it's not like uh, kind of what it is in the states it's like very casual sitting down watching a soccer game um, and so I remember he gave me this address and I like remembered how to get there it wasn't far but to me it seemed like such a big task 
Um, and I remember walking in and I was like really timid. Um, and I walked in and the lady looked at me and she said, she said like, are you um, Fernando's daughter? And I just thought that was so cute. And I walked in and he saw me, he's like, mi hija, which means my daughter in Spanish. And he introduced me to all his friends. And it was just so fun to like sit in a very like traditional Spanish kind of setting, watching a soccer game. Um, and I just, you, when are you going to get that experience? Otherwise, I don't think I would get that experience um, even from a college abroad um, um, experience. But then I would say my favorite on-campus memories. I remember my first year at Proctor, I took um, an, um, like an environmental studies or, or wildlife science class um, with a really dear faculty member. And I remember sitting in the back of a pickup truck we were just going up a tiny hill, but um, sitting there with like my best friend and some other classmates that I just gotten close to, like going to explore, I think it's Proctor's 3000 acres of land and just like sitting there and being like, oh my gosh, this would never have happened if I'd stayed, you know, at public school. Um, and so that was really special. So both of those really highlight Proctor's experiential learning, which um, is just so unique and special. Awesome. And Sam, now that you're, you've joined us, I'll call on you next because all eyes are on you at the moment. I just, I had just been watching my screen get darker and darker. <laughs> we had no lights on in the room. Um, this is the worst question because I've been sitting here hearing your guys' answers and just keep changing mine because there are so many. Um, my arguably there are so many good ones so this is just the one that I have in my head right now but my favorite off-campus memory was on mountain classroom um and part of like the tradition of mountain classroom is that you do a uh, solo so you go into the we, for us since we were in the south we went into the desert for like three days and three nights and you're alone after spending like, six or seven weeks never probably never leaving a mile leaving this like mile circle from the same 10 or 11 people. Um, and then all of a sudden you're alone in the desert and it like is wild because you're so used to being surrounded by so many of your good close friends. Um, but part of the, the tradition of it is right before you go out, you ring a bell. And once you ring it, everybody has to stop talking and you walk out to your solo spots and everybody goes their different ways and you lose sight of each other and you come back and you still aren't speaking until you ring the bell again when everybody is together. And just the, I remember seeing people one by one coming out of their solo areas and all of us were just trying so hard to stay silent for the sake of this tradition and nobody could. We were all like laughing through our closed mouths and like hugging each other and like, <laughs> And we got back, we had sort of split, it's hard to explain, but we had sort of split into two groups and then gone and then split into individual areas. And my group got back to the camp after the other group had, and we thought we were first because everybody else had hid. Um, and we got back and we were like, oh, like they're got like looking around because we weren't speaking. Like, oh, they aren't here yet. And all of them jumped out at us and like started hugging us because they were all hiding. And we rang the bell and we all screamed and like told each other about our solos. And it's just like, I don't think I have ever, and I'm not sure that I will ever feel a feeling like coming back to that group of people was, um, it was like in, indescribable. I'm trying so hard and it just is making me smile more and more. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Um, on campus, there are so many also, um, a lot of them, we're like, like Haley was talking about, we have 3000 acres of forest. Um, and a lot of it, it has to do with like hiking in there, mountain biking in there, all those good times that come with that. Um, but I think probably I owe my best times on campus to the coffee house, which is the student, student run space that um, as just like has comfy chairs and they serve like hot chocolate and coffee and stuff like that. And every weekend, that's where me and all my friends and you guys, I mean, I know I saw, I saw you guys there all the time, but would just go and play cards and hang out. And it was just like that positive space on campus that you could always go to and have like a great experience.
Um, and there's no specific moment. It's just all the joy that comes from that place that comes to me, but yeah. Nice. Now that's definitely, you can look back on it. It's really tough to like pick a specific moment. So thank you guys. And Lucas, I'm going to round that question out with you. That's so tough. Uh, hmm. So um, I'm going to take my off, can I do, I'll do two, off campus. So I guess there's a theme of those unpleasant experiences ending up being like the special ones. Um like Mackenzie. Um, so we were, un- we were about to clean out the bus. Um, we parked for a night. We we're going to clean out the bus. Um, I started to feel ill. Um, and I, I don't know if people, Sam, I don't know if you guys thought I was faking it because I didn't want to clean out the bus or anything, but I started to feel seriously sick over the course of like 10 minutes. And um, we're all like in like our rags, like p- prepubescent mustaches, like looking all funky. And, um, and keep in, keep in mind also when you're, when you're imagining this, Lucas had gotten in a skiing accident over break and was missing all of his front teeth. That too. Um, <laughs> so, um, then my, like my friend Augie's like, yeah, I'm feeling sick too. And I couldn't tell if he was serious, but then I'm like, okay, it's, I, I gotta go throw up. So I just like, we're in like, plain desert so I just walk out there um and I like throw up so like they know I'm not faking it and then Augie throws up too and we're like okay like we still don't feel good it's not like throw up once and it's one and done you we um had to set up camp like a hundred yards away from everyone else just me and Augie because we were feeling sick and we couldn't be in a tent so it was just our mats under the stars me and Augie um and like covered in throw up and it went all night, like lay in bed. And then I like hear Augie crawl up like t- 10 feet away from the mat. I'm like, oh, it's my turn too. Like, let's do it together. We go up, <laughs> Augie, Augie has a problem where he can't just like throw up. It's like 10 attempts of screaming. So he's keeping everyone else up too in the whole camp. And like, we're like laughing, but like in total pain together, like knowing we're not gonna get a wink of sleep. Um, and then the next day we started to feel better, but I'd say that was that 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 had to be probably the best night of mountain. Like I don't think I've ever bonded with someone so well. Uh, oh, sorry, Mike went on, but yep. Yeah. And on campus, honestly, um, I had to say my triple senior year, um, just like really good friends and always always something going on. We'd only play spike ball or. Like go to class, like, oh, help, like you're in this class. Like I was just in that class. Like, here's how you do this math or whatever the subject was. Um, I know it's kind of vague. Senior spring triple, I think takes the bacon. Just like, I've never felt like a community like that close. Just like, we're like, we're nearly there. Like, so we were just all in a good mood 24 seven. Nice. Um, Thank you for that story, Lucas. That was fantastic. I've never heard someone say the word throw up so many times in one minute, Um, but it was great. It was a great story. I actually lied to you guys. I had another question come in. So I have two questions left now. I promise. I'm sorry. I know it's getting a little late, Um, but this next question is what aspects of the Proctor culture do you feel now make you unique amongst your peers? And how did you relay your Proctor experience in your college applications? Lucas, how did you relay that story you just told us in your college application process <laughs> into all your college peers, or just in general? I'm of- far more vague in the application than I was <laughs> the story 10 seconds ago. Um, uh, but just in general of like, how do you, you know, we have all these amazing opportunities that, you know, we've all had these experiences here at Proctor. And how do you, how do you synthesize that down to, you know, be concise in an application process? And when you are talking with your peers and stuff of do they actually even believe you when you talk about your stories yeah it's hard to just like talk about like the bonding and like um the friendship without sounding cliche um because i'm sure all the applications sounded exactly like mine but um well not exactly like mine but everyone said oh i bonded with this person i bonded um i would just what made my application i think stand out 
is that I don't think many other students have the opportunity to be so involved on campus and involved in opportunities off campus as a proctor student could be. So I, I definitely pushed in like, ex, like sports, government, student government, um, but also all the fun, all the like unusual stories that would make an application stand out definitely would come from mountain classroom um, and like European art classroom just more diverse and all. You just have way more branches to, to reach to. Yeah, thanks, Lucas. And then maybe I'll have Mackenzie, you be the other student to tackle this as you know more recent. And you know, you're sitting down for your Sarah Lawrence interview. How do you pack the Proctor experience and your growth and the direction you wanna go in that you know hour or less? Like, how did that work for you in the application process? And you know, this year too, being a freshman amongst your peers and you know, chatting with your roommate about your Proctor experience, how do you kind of feel like you've been set aside from your peers in some aspects? Yeah. Um, well, I specifically remember when I came to interview at the school. Um, obviously, pre-pandemic, uh, I was sitting in this tiny office with the other person and. I was just sort of telling them all about my high school experience and pretty much like everything I had done. And at the end, they were just like, I can't believe you've done all of that in four years. And I was like, I know. <laughs> um, and they were just sort of like in awe. And I think a lot of schools just relaying a lot of information about what I had done during high school. They were just sort of taken back and they were like, oh my God. <laughs> um, because I think a lot of the experience experiences that we have in just four years a lot of people don't really have in their entire lifetime and I think that is probably the biggest thing that stands out to a lot of schools um and I mean I wrote about ocean for my um uh for my uh letter for school I forget what it's called my application um and I think that that also was helpful in sort of relaying of like all this sort of crazy intense stuff I did for two months um, and how a lot of those skills help me in college now. I mean, I didn't lie about that in the application. They actually do help me a lot now. Um, and I think just in general, a lot of the off-campus stuff and a lot of on-campus stuff sets you apart from a lot of kids that are at um, college. Um, and I know just talking with my friends here, they're like, you did that in high school? Like you, you lived on a boat for two months, what? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, and just a lot of the crazy stories, um, I think people are really taken back by. Yeah, it's so funny in our community, you know, as a faculty member, if I'm reading somebody's college essay, I'm like, oh, you're writing about ocean classroom? Like, that's, that's you know, so many people do that because in our community, it's so normalized to go in ocean classroom. And then I have to like remind myself, I'm like, oh, you're a proctor, it, like that seems like low hanging, not low hanging fruit, I'm not saying you're <laughs> low hanging fruit, that was the wrong word, but um, you know, and then like thinking though to like college admissions counselors, they, they that's something that they probably have never had any applicant write about before, except for Denison, because they have four proctor students in Sam's class. Um, but <laughs> otherwise, like it's pretty crazy of how unique your application process becomes coming out of proctor. But um, very last question of the night, guys. Um, hopefully a pretty easy one in some aspects. Actually, it's a loaded question, but um, you know these are all accepted families that are joining us and also going to watch the recording. Um, I'd love to hear from each one of you of just one piece you would love to give a family that's been accepted to Proctor and is in this decision process of, you know, they've been accepted to many schools. It's a lot of phenomenal kids of where they're going next and how to make that choice and just any words of wisdom um, that you guys have. Uh, so Haley, I might start with you on that one. Yeah, I was just thinking, um, even in terms of the last question, but it answers this one too. Like, I, I don't know, at least at my public high school, like none of the kids that did theater or were involved in music at all were also athletes. And like, it was very like rigid in terms of like what you did. But at Proctor, I was the soccer captain and I also was in vocal ensemble and I was also on National Honor Society. Like you don't need to fit into a mold at Proctor, which is just like, just so incredible because that, I, I stopped, like I sang in middle school and then I got to high school and I completely stopped because that just wasn't possible given the schedule of athletics at that, um, at my high school prior to Proctor. 
Um, but I just was like everyone else was saying, um, I was very diverse going into college and still am. I mean, I just interviewed for um, an internship for the summer. And one of the questions they asked me about was how I'm unique. And I talked about going to Spain and the confidence I developed um, and the, how that sets me apart. And I, I mean, I got the internship, so maybe I can accredit it to that. But um, if you do go to Proctor, which you should, just do everything. Like you won't regret trying something. You really won't. And even if it doesn't end up being the thing you want to stick with, I just don't think there's anything you can do at Proctor that you'll be like, oh, I wish I hadn't wasted my time on that. I, I mean, I repeated solely because I was like, I can't do this school in one year. I need two years. I didn't need it for any other reason. I just wanted two years at Proctor so badly. Um, so just do everything. Thanks, Haley. Um, Sam, what piece of advice would you give an accepted student? Um, I mean, this is probably like too on the nose, but go to Proctor. Like, I, like, that's my advice is to go to Proctor. I am at Dennis to now, and there's kind of a surprisingly large amount of people who had gone to boarding school who are here, and they, I'm friends with a lot of them, but they hear me or they hear me and Anna or me and some of my other friends who went to Proctor who are now here talk about Proctor and they have their mouths wide open. Like not just the off-campus study, just hearing how we talk about the school we came from compared to how they feel about theirs. I'm not gonna like name drop their schools or anything, but um, but it like is a total difference. People who come out of Proctor like we love Proctor. We cry at graduation. We we don't want to go. And that's why two years later, we come back and we talk about how much we love it on these panels. Um, and once you're there, just do everything you can. Fill your schedule. Like every single thing you can fit in, fit in. Um, it's like, it really is the best place. And I don't think any of anyone would regret spending their high school experience there. Awesome, thanks, Sam. And Mackenzie, I'm passing the mic to you. Yeah, um, I have sort of a similar sentiment to Haley. Um, I would just also, I wanna preface this by saying, they're not paying us to do this. Like this is our, by our own free will. <laughs> um, uh, this is us just coming back and we really love Proctor. So that's why we're doing this. But um, yeah, I would say that honestly, my biggest piece of advice would just be say yes to absolutely everything. If someone offers you an opportunity at Proctor to go do something that is maybe out of your comfort zone or you're just like, I don't know if I have a lot of time for that. I don't know if I can do it. Say yes, because some of my best experiences at Proctor were just by saying yes to things. I came to Proctor wanting to do European art classroom, which is a great program. And I was supposed to go my senior spring, but then COVID happened. Um, and I was like, OSHA, not showering for three weeks, like for two months, like, no thanks. Um, but then someone was like, you should go. I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> and I went and it's, it's one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. And I think just by saying yes to everything, it opens you up to so many new opportunities and paths in your life that you wouldn't have taken otherwise. And I think, yeah, just say yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mackenzie. I also just feel like you read my mind a little bit, but on the opposite direction. I was just thinking before you said that, I was like, oh, I should demo these kids like some coffee money for tomorrow morning, like a, a sweet treat because they're crushing it. And then she's like, they're not paying us. Um, but I didn't tell them I was going to get them any coffee beforehand, if that counts for anything. Um, Lucas, your family, again, has drank the Proctor Kool-Aid and keeps coming back. Um, what advice do you have for families? Now that he knows he's getting coffee money, you can't trust a word he says. You shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no. Um, um, yeah. Uh, Off-campus programs. That's that's what drew me in when my sister Nicola went. Um, my sister Anna just did Euro. My brother Oscar just did Mountain. And that's what took us. Oscar was hard to get on the off-campus train. He's like, like ah, I got my friends here. Do I really want to do that? And I mean, he got off a few weeks ago and maybe two weeks before that he had a phone call which is like a big deal on that one and he called me and I've never heard him like so happy he's like 
Lucas, you gotta listen to this. Like, can't understand a word he's saying because he's got like five minutes. <laughs> um, but yeah, off campus programs for sure. And again, you go to anyone, talk to anyone who's gone to Proctor, they'd be happy to do anything like this. Like, Sam, I woke up this morning and I just had a text from Sam Wyckoff, and he's like, Hey, Lucas, want to do a panel today? And I was like, Sure, yeah. Um, I had no idea what this was going to be. I didn't know it was a whole alumni thing. But yeah, every, I mean, pretty much everyone just is ecstatic about Proctor and loves sharing their experiences. So just tell your children, or if you're a child, just do everything. Um, just like everyone else said. Awesome. Um, thank you all for coming out tonight and a big round of applause to these alumni for giving up their night. Some of them might have had homework, things like that. I didn't really care. I made them do it anyhow. Um, and also just a huge shout out again. You'll see them all working in admissions within the next few years. I don't really care what they're studying in college. They're coming to work here. They just they just passed the application process. Um, but thank you all families. And um, again, if you ever have any questions that weren't answered, feel free to reach out to your admissions counselor. Or if there's anyone that you want to connect with, just let me know um, and I can make those connections on campus for you. But have a great evening and hopefully we see you all next fall. Bye. Woo. Um, I'll put in the email. Do all of you guys, I'm assuming everyone has Venmo at this point. I'm going to Venmo you guys. I'm actually going to uh, say <laughs> in the morning. I was totally kidding, but I mean. I literally was like just thinking, I was like, I'm going to Venmo them because I've been getting all the kids that have been doing panels here. I go either to Dunks or Starbucks and get them coffee. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to get these guys coffees too. Um, and then she straight up like, as I was thinking, I was like, yeah, they're not paying us. <laughs> Um, Mackenzie, I literally cold called. I'm fairly certain she was in class like this <laughs> afternoon. I was like, Can you do a panel tonight? I need you. <laughs> so, sorry, I had my camera off. It's okay. <laughs> you um, guys are awesome. Thank you guys. you guys so much. AB, yeah, you please. crushed it. Hi, Chris. Um, all right. I'll let Hello, you guys Samuel. go. But... <laughs> Samuel Joseph Wyckoff. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for, thanks for thinking of me. Oh my God. So you're the first person we always think of. <laughs> yeah, Sam, I, I didn't even overlap with you at all. And when I was planning this panel, just from meeting you last spring, I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to get Sam Wyckoff on this. <laughs> <laughs> Chris sent me a text. Um, and I woke up to it one morning and I was like, well, this is the best news of my week. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think you texted your mom first too. Cause I got a screenshot of a conversation with your mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Chris knows that you guys can, wrote me into these for as oh. as long as you'll take me i'll be here for him i'm saying you're gonna come back and work here yeah that's what my mom keeps saying to me <laughs> everyone told yeah. me i was gonna be a lifer last year because i thought i was only coming back to work one year chris kept telling me i was gonna be a lifer and i was like no no way and now i'm getting my like master's in education and policy so i can stay working at proctor <laughs> <laughs> unless chris and i that's go off awesome. on a side hustle you you can uh alicia you can start my job i don't like, want your job uh, I don't want your job. You can take my job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so one job I don't want. Actually, I don't I'm, want to be head of school and I don't want to be you. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move, I'm moving to Costa Rica. I didn't tell you this. I told you we're going to rehab together, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we have okay. Chris, I just uh I just booked my flight down to the house with some people. When are you going? I'm going uh beginning of June, first week of June. Nice. We, uh are you going unchaperoned? Yeah, I'm going with Kaylee Murawski. Oh, really? 